video earlier, but uh, my computer wasn't working, so let me record it. I'm going to be doing uh, creeds and confessions. Um, I have these on my website, pureburberry.com. Um, so uh, I'm going to focus on the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed, and the Chalcedonian Creed. Um, uh, actually, here, let me just do site peterburberry.com creed. Uh, I guess it hasn't indexed my website yet. Um, but if you go down to here, uh, I have the Chalcedonian Creed, the Athanasian Creed, and then on the next page, I have. Um, Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed, they might do more creeds. Um, okay, um, so, uh, alright, so let me get, um, so, uh, you can access the creeds here. Um, you can also go to, uh, Wikisource, as the creeds. So if I Google uh, the Apostles' Creed, watch Google Apostles' Creed Wiki Source. Uh, one of the issues is there's different versions because, like, um, the Apostles' Creed. I used to in my Presbyterian church. Uh, I would say to judge the quick and the dead and. No one, when you say someone's living, you don't say they're quick. So that's kind of archaic language, I think, and like Siddith. Um, so there's kind of a language barrier in some of it. Um, and I think it's good to update it. So I'm going to be using, um, yeah, so like church with an extra E, the communion of saints, uh, the ESV. Now you have to pay for this. This is, uh, um, uh, a subscription thing for like a year um so it's not free and unless you pay for it you won't be able to access it but i'm going to be using this um it's like esv plus um but you can create a free account on esv.org um and so i have study bibles esv study bible gospel transformation study bible systematic study bible archaeology study bible this is published by crossway Global Study Bible, Student Study Bible, Literary Study Bible, Story of Redemption Bible, Commentaries and Sermons, Expository Commentary, Preaching the Word Commentary, Devotionals, Men's Devotional Bible, Women's Devotional Bible, the ESV Devotional Psalter, Prayer Bible, Original Language Tools, the Greek New Testament, uh, let me read this, uh, produced by Tyndale House Cambridge, the Hebrew Old Testament, Westminster, Leningrad Codex, Knowing the Bible, a 12-week study, Pastor's Bible, Creeds and Confessions. Um, so I'm going to use these Creeds and Confessions. Okay, Let's see what the introduction is. Um, yeah, no copyright. Um, introduction, brief statements of key doctrines have been with us since the beginning of biblical history. They often focus on God and the way of salvation. Old Testament readers encounter in the capstone of the books of Moses. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord our... Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Deuteronomy 6.4 New Testament readers overhear Paul summarizing to the Corinthians his own teaching. I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, 1 Corinthians 15, 3-5. The desire to state truth openly is a basic Christian instinct, cults hide truth. Christ's, discipl Christ's disciples share what they have learned. Unsurprisingly, historians have found dozens of summaries of scriptural teaching from the centuries following the ascension of Christ and the deeds of his apostles. It was not unusual for such statements to begin with the Latin word credo, meaning I believe. These early creeds, like those in the scriptures, often focus on what, church, on what the church understood to be true about God, or on what is and is not true about the person of Christ, or on what we must believe about the work of Christ as Savior. As it happens, later creeds tend to be longer than earlier ones. By the time of the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s, so much had been learned and so many doctrines were being disputed between the Reformers in Rome, the creeds are supplemented by a longer list of doctrines than Christians confess. 
creeds were still in use, but most definitely in worship, but now confessions were written to explain what Lutheran Reformed Christians believed. The confessions carefully explained what doctrines were held in common with the old faith of Rome, also stating clearly where the reformers were forced to disagree with Rome and their recovery of the teachings of the early church and most basically of the Bible. They also explained where the reformers disagreed with one another. Naturally, because confessions say more and more confessions were needed. Here we find a contrast with creeds. Creeds have a wide circulation among Christian churches. One creed can serve Baptists, Presbyterians, Anglicans, and Lutherans alike. These communions needed something more precise than a creed if they were to possess working documents that united like-minded missionaries and church members if they were to train teachers of the word successfully, or if they wished to advance clear communion between preachers and parishioners with the one seeking a place to serve and the other seeking a pastor. While typically not used in worship, these confessions were useful for worship. Careful distinctions provided richer material for praise than did broad generalizations. Saying more about the character of God and the grace of the gospel encouraged more confidence in prayer. Creeds also pay, I mean, confessions also pay careful attention to precise terminology, a kind of labeling that promoted learning. Such a technique has proved useful in studies of the natural world and of language. It is useful in the study of the Bible, too. Concerning justification, for example, the scriptures speak of a righteousness of Christ credited to those who do not deserve it. They also speak of a free gift of forgiveness purchased by Christ for sinners. Sometimes the Bible tethers this righteousness to justification, and sometimes it ties forgiveness to justification. The authors of Reformation confessions know these association of words and ideas. They did not see tension or confusion. On the contrary, they credited that justification must be the Bible's umbrella term for accredited righteousness on the one hand and divine forgiveness, and they are two distinct but united aspects of the one doctrine of justification. In light of such detail discovered after a careful study of the scriptures, it is hardly possible for an attentive Christian to be content with only and always speaking of salvation in general. Only alert. Once alert to fuller teaching, Christians ought to explain and then celebrate justification. And then one discovers adoption, then the blessing of sanctification, then perseverance, and so on. The Reformation era confessions identify, explain, and celebrate these gifts with gratitude. Through such statements, we confess our faith to God and before the world. Creeds and confessions most obviously serve a doctrinal purpose. Nonetheless, if they have sufficient gravitas, they enjoy an ecumenical purpose as well. These historic statements remind us that the content of the Christian faith does not continually change, they being Christians of the present in a conversation with Christians of the past. Classic creeds and confessions also remind us that we do not read the Bible only as individuals, we read the Bible as one body experiencing significant unity as we do so. These are things that a list of bullet points on a church website cannot do. Some lists may have the form of a creed, but they will never have the full function of a creed. Four of the better-known creeds of the early church, two of which were written by ecumenical councils, are printed here for the use of individuals and churches. The confessions and catechisms that follow are particularly significant texts in Protestant history. These are redefining documents for Lutherans, Anglicans, the Dutch Reformed, Presbyterians, and Baptists. Sometimes with slight adjustments, they have been used by many millions of Christians. These creeds and confessions are printed with the Bible not to give them equal stand with Scripture. Nothing could rise to the level of this library of 66 books from God. Creeds and confessions are useful only to the extent that they are produced faithfully the teaching of scripture itself. For printing them here will serve Christians well in their attempt to understand one another better. It will help us to listen quietly when we too often talk noisily, and doing so will serve as a helpful teaching tool for churches, perhaps offering paragraphs that will be incorporated into worship in order to help God's people state what they believe, confess their sin, and profess faith in, profess, profess faith in Christ all by the power of the Spirit. For individuals, adding one more bookmark to our Bible will enable readers to benefit not only from their daily reading of the scriptures, but also from a paragraph or a set of questions and answers that summarize Christian truth in profoundly helpful ways. Alright, uh, so I'll read the Apostles' Creed next. I'm hoping to do a YouTube playlist. Uh, this will be the first video in the uh, playlist on creeds.